Hello everyone, back at it again in my little yellow kayak. Just launched the boat. Still haven't got my rod squared away or anything else for that matter, but I will shortly. So the game plan today is to talk about some strategies for fishing pressured fish. Got a little bit of a late start this morning. It's a little after 7 a.m. There's already two other anglers fishing this cove. And so I thought we'd take a minute and talk about some strategies you can use when um, you know, you're fishing behind other anglers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kinda keep an eye on, on what they're doing so I don't get in their way and I can make a plan uh, basically to, to fish uh, newer water, cleaner water, water that hasn't just been fished. So for example, if they go right, I'm gonna go left. If they're working left to right, maybe I'll work the other way. If they're fishing, I don't know, it seems like most people around me, they fish cover, almost exclusively visible cover. They don't pay much attention to offshore structure. They don't pay much attention to offshore bait. So if I see any of that kind of stuff, I'm going to immediately pivot and fish offshore. And if I don't, I'm not going to be throwing, well, at least around me, 90% of the people are fishing visible cover and they're fishing it with some kind of Senko. The color varies, but some kind of Senko, maybe a Yum Dinger, maybe a Berkeley General, something like that. And it might be a baby bass color or green pumpkin or even a blue with a flake or I don't know what. But some kind of Senko. That's what most people, if they're not fishing shiners, they're fishing a Senko at visible cover. So right away I'm going to do something different. I'm going to throw that JT-115 walking bait just to gauge the fish's activity. I got a little bit of cloud cover, not much wind yet. I just want to see if I can get any fish to react to that bait at all. And I'm not fishing visible cover. I'm fishing basically in the middle of this shallow pocket of the cove. And I'm also watching the other anglers and seeing which way they're going. I can't, I'm not close enough to see what baits they're throwing. I don't want to get that close either. I want to give them plenty of room. I don't want to be trying to cut them off. I don't want to get in their way. I'm, I'm literally trying to avoid them. And it's not, it's nothing personal. I'm sure they're, they're nice guys. I just don't want to be fishing directly behind them or get in their way or you know, I, I'm trying to be polite, really, but also um, fish water that hasn't just been fished. So I noticed one of the anglers went out of the cove and he turned left. So I'm going to go out of the cove and turn right. And I'm assuming, just from watching him for a little bit, that he was working left to right. So if I go right and work right to left, we shouldn't run into each other. I'm guessing he's already fished the place that I'm planning on fishing. But before I got out there, I noticed some offshore bait dimpling around. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera. I'll get a little closer to him. There was just one flash in the top left. And I assume these are bluegill, but they could be uh, chiners. They could be juvenile white perch couldn't tell exactly what they were, but they're acting like bluegill. So I'm going to just toss the reverse rig underneath them and you can see them a little bit better in the top left where my line's um, running out to. I know they're still kind of hard to see. There's one that just dimpled. It's pretty subtle. Now there, there's another one that just dimpled and another. So yeah, now you can see them a lot better. When it's come like this in the morning it's pretty easy to, to spot the bait fish if they're on the surface when there's a little bit of a chop on the water it gets a lot harder so anyway whenever I run into a school of, of bait fish like this I'm always gonna drop something underneath them and see if I can pull out any fish from 
from that school of bait or panfish or whatever they are. And in this case, it didn't work out, but uh, I still think the idea was a good one. I'm doing something different. I'm fishing offshore. I'm fishing bait. I'm not fishing visible structure. This school of bait is going to move around and they're kind of swimming around in circles. I have to move the kayak every once in a while to stay on top of them. Now they're almost right on the boat. They're a little bit too close to me. And maybe um, there's multiple schools of bait out here. At some point, there will be fish on this bait. And, and it just might not have been my day, but eventually some bigger predator fish will sniff these bait fish out and, um, and eat them. And I could come back here with a swim bait and fish offshore. I know the general area where this, this uh, bait ball is. And I could come back here when the wind picks up and fish a swim bait or a mag draft or um, uh, dangerous bait, something that looks more like a panfish, some glide bait, and, um, and see if I could pick any off in the wind. So fishing offshore bait fish is uh, another strategy. And I've exited the cove. I turned right. I know the camera angle is a little tough right now, but I'm fishing against the bank and I'm fishing with um, a BFS pencil. That's the Yozuri 3DRX pencil. Yozuri makes some good walking baits and I feel like they kind of fly under the radar in freshwater anyway. Saltwater, they're getting a little bit more popular. But this is a downsized version and I've got it in a bone color. I said in one of the earlier videos that I was going to swap out those hooks. And I did. Those are Hayabusu size 8 hooks. Got a slick gray finish. They're nice and sharp. So if a fish just swipes at it like this smallmouth did, chances are he's going to get stuck. So I'm happy with those hooks now. The bait already walked great. There he goes. He's not a giant, but it's a start. So as I'm going along here, chances are the other angler was fishing left to right as he was moving along. I'm fishing right to left and that means that I can get back underneath some of these docks um, and show the fish just a different angle. I'm also fishing a downsized bait. Sometimes that helps when fishing behind people. It's not quite a BFS. Uh, walking bait, it's a quarter of an ounce, but it's pretty small. It would be similar to the Mega Bass Dog X Junior, just at a third of the price. And I like that bone color. They've got another color, black and silver I like. And um, I wish they'd make it in the Gizzard Chat. I really like that color. But a couple good colors. And it's just a downsized walking bait. And it's something that these fish probably haven't seen a lot of. You know, they probably have seen full-size walking baits, but they probably haven't seen the downsize versions. And for something like smallies, those downsized walking baits can be gold. Even pressured largemouth, sometimes the bigger largemouth will take a small bait just every once in a while. So it's another strategy to use uh, when fishing pressured fish. All right, this is a few casts later. I'm fishing right to left. And so I can access the backs of those docks more easily than somebody going left to right. I threw a few casts in tighter to shore, but I didn't pull any fish out of it. And this bite was really subtle. Walking that Yozuri 3DRX pencil. And I had one try to slurp it down, but it's like he didn't really get it. So I've got a follow-up bait ready to go. That's a baby goat. I used up all my TRD bugs. i got to get some more of those. So it's a baby goat on a little micro Texas rig. Reel down to them. Stick them. I've got a floral keeper on the hook so the Elastec bait doesn't slide down the hook and ball up on the hook and ruin the hook set. Those Elastec baits are kind of slippery so it helps to have some kind of bait keeper on there. Now he's not a giant fish but I'm pretty sure that was the fish that that tried to slurp the little pencil down. He's only about a pound. Thanks for playing, bud. I included this next clip just because I thought it was funny, but I tossed the Yozuri 3DRX pencil right against the wall. 
and a little fish jumped all over it almost as soon as it landed. I wasn't sure what I had at first because it was so small, but that is a little tiny smallmouth that's almost the same size as the bait with, I don't know what to call it, but I'll say a lot of ambition. A lot of ambition for a, a fish that size to go after a bait like that. But, you know, considering how small he was, he was in pretty good shape. Nice and fat. He looked like he'd been eating well. Probably whatever falls in the water he eats. I didn't do too much else fishing that wall. But I noticed the other angler that was fishing the cove, he came out too. And so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the opposite. He came out of the cove, I'm going to go back in the cove. I noticed a few other things too. He was fishing a 16 foot fisher. It's a tin boat. And I happen to know that boat pretty well because I have the same boat. I have the same tin boat. And I noticed that he wasn't too keen on pushing far back into the weeds. And the reason for that is that uh, these stringy weeds that are under the surface of the water will foul a trolling motor prop pretty quickly. Even with a weed eating prop, the stuff is just so thick. I know you can't really tell because it doesn't look like there's too much on the surface of the water and there really isn't yet. But underneath the surface there's all kinds of stringy weeds and grass and hydrilla and coontail and eelgrass. But it mostly that stringy grass that gets caught on everything, gets caught on my treble hooks. But it will actually uh, do a job on props too. It's pretty tough stuff. And it will just wrap right around the prop. So I know that, that he isn't going to take his boat too far into the backwaters where there's even thicker grass. And so that's where I'm headed. I'm headed for the thick stuff. And I really could use a frog right here. But I don't have a frog. I have a Storm Arashi cover pop. And so that's what I'm going to be fishing. Just because that's what I have. But really, um, after fishing it for the morning, I would have been much better off with a frog. Because the grass is thick enough now that I kept getting it all over my popper. And I would constantly have to clear the popper of grass and, and weeds and, and junk that would uh, mess up my retrieve. All right, I've got this dead fall tree up ahead. I'm going to put the popper right on the tip of that tree. See if I can get any fish to come out and eat it. The advantage of a frog really is that I could put that frog in places where a lot of other anglers won't, won't cast, either because they're afraid they're going to get the lure stuck or they're afraid that if they do get a fish they won't be able to get it out of cover. And that is not the target species, that is a pickerel. Another pickerel on poppers. He threw the popper and ended up in my net. I'm not even going to get my hands all slimy, I'm just going to show them to you on camera in the net. And we will count that as a win. I'm going to check my leader, make sure the pickerel didn't scuff up my leader. Pick some of the weeds off the popper and I'm ready to go again. Alright, just a couple casts later. Put it way back in a pocket. Started walking that popper out. And something decided to eat it. Could tell right away he's a good fish because he's pulling the boat. That's always a good sign. Oh, that's a good one. Trying to see how well he's hooked. He's got the popper down his mouth. So I'm going to pop him in the net just so... I don't accidentally stick my thumb into a treble hook. He got all that. It's way down there. That's a good sign. It means he liked my presentation. I've got a pair of six inch straight forceps that are a big help in situations like this where even needle nose pliers might struggle to get way down there. I got that popper out. No fuss. That's a nice bass. Nice big head on him. Probably a her, actually. Looks like it spawned out. It might have been a little heavier. It still was full of eggs. This one's going on the scale. I'm going to let it go, of course. I just want to see how much it weighs. Usually I don't weigh them. But um, anything over five I like to put on a scale. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see the weight. Five, three, five, seven, five, nine. 
I think I'll call that 5.7. Might have been 5.9 or 5.5, five, five, I don't know. Something over 5. Got to take a quick picture. I dunked the fish right before. I don't know if you saw that, but I, I don't like to keep them out of the water too long without dunking them. So gave him a quick dunk. We'll get a quick photo. Dunk him again. Swish him back and forth and off he goes. So I kept pushing back until I couldn't really go any further. Well, I couldn't go any further easily. Still walking that cover pop. Next time I come here, I'll definitely have the frog because the cover pop was driving me a little crazy by the end. It kept getting fouled up with grass and weeds and eel grass and everything else. There's a ton of pollen on the water too. Looks like pond scum, but that's all pollen in the back there. And I got another fish. That one chased it all the way almost to the boat. Little bass. But he's feisty. I got him just by a single hook. I changed the, the hooks and split rings on that bait and I'm kind of glad I did. Uh, not for a, a, the one pound bass, but for the, the five pounder I caught earlier. Sometimes little details like that can make a difference between getting a fish like that into the boat and um, not getting them at all. And that fish I just had by a thread and that's, he's not a big fish, but um, with sharp hooks, you can get fish like that in the boat instead of, you know, having them come off. And if it was a really big fish, I'd be annoyed if I lost it just because I, I didn't change the hooks. There's a little stream that comes in back here, kind of forks, and then comes in in two different spots. And I'm fishing the spot with the most flow. It's not a ton of flow right now. If we had some rain, it would be flowing pretty well. And I got another topwater pickerel. Pickerel on poppers. Who'd have thunk it? He's mean and mad, so I'm going to net him. He's got the hook all wrapped up on him. He's probably going to make a mess of my net, too. But that's all right. Get my trusty forceps out. Try not to get stuck or bit. Maybe if I grab him behind the neck, can have a little easier time for both of us. Ah, I got the hooks in the net. There he is. Kind of skinny. Needs to eat a few more bluegills. He'll be all right though. All right, I had a good morning fishing out here, trying to employ some strategies to deal with pressured fish. We fished offshore, we fished some bait, we went right to left instead of left to right. Pretty much just doing something different than everybody else was doing. And I got that one nice fish and a couple little fish, but all in all, a Pretty decent morning. I was happy with it. I was happy with that one big fish. The others were kind of a bonus. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Just like all my other videos, I'll list all the gear in the video description so you can duplicate what I was doing here today and hopefully have some good success on your home waters, wherever they might be. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya!